As part of the second installment of our series leading to Election Day, Protecting Your Vote, we're taking a look at the people across the country who are dedicated to ensuring the integrity of the voting process. And with less than a month left until the November elections, heated rhetoric is ramping up with a number of conspiracy theories, like unsubstantiated claims of widespread non-citizen voting taking hold. ABC's Maria Villarreal investigates those claims. Cecilia Castellano's roots run deep in South Texas. She grew up in a small conservative town just outside San Antonio. Hi, I'm Cecilia Castellano. And now she wants to represent this area in the state house. You know, um, I'm not a politician. I'm a business owner and I'm an advocate for children with disabilities and for small minority women-owned businesses. She knew running as a Democrat in a state that's deeply red would be challenging. Uh, thank you, sir. I appreciate it, okay? Have a blessed one. Bye-bye. I'm not going to vote Trump. But she never thought she would be caught up in the middle of a political storm accused of violating election law. August 20th. What happened that day? I remember being woken up about maybe six in the morning with my doorbell going off and uh, banging on my door. Hi, police department. They said, ma'am, we have a, a search warrant. I said, a search warrant for what? They're like, well, can we come in? I didn't know if it was, I, if this was fake, if, if, um, my opponent or somebody, one of them was sending these people, like was, is this really real? So I said, I need to get my husband, can you wait? My husband comes like, what, what, what is this about? What's going on? And he's like, sir, we're here to get your wife's phone. Officers were looking for evidence of vote harvesting, a newly minted Texas law that says it's illegal to interact with people while their ballot is nearby. But Cecilia says she's done nothing wrong and she's never been charged. So she's not even clear what she's accused of. What is clear, Cecilia says, is that this is voter intimidation. It still lingers with me. I mean, I can't even sleep comfortably. And I try to be strong, but I know that even sometimes a strong can be weak. What happened at Cecilia's home was part of a coordinated series of raids. She says officers also showed up at the homes of several people she knew, including her campaign consultant. They went to his home. They went in, they broke down his door, and they went in with 13 assault rifles. Two of them sat there and then two went to my bedroom. 87-year-old Lydia Martinez says officers spent three hours searching her home while she stood nearby in her nightgown. They told me to go outside and I said, let me get dressed. And they said, no, you go outside. It's very embarrassing, humiliating, horrible. They put me through hell. More than a dozen raids executed on Latinos and not a single person has been charged with a crime. I remember that day we cried about it and we're like, what in the world is this? Like, why are they coming to the areas where, the, where it's predominantly Latinos, the rural areas? Why are they targeting this area, House District 80? Because they're trying to intimidate the Latinos. I had gotten calls early on, people telling me, Cecilia, you need to keep fighting, but I don't think I'm gonna vote. Texas Governor Greg Abbott says this is a crackdown on illegal voting, but critics say he's using new election laws as a tool to make voting more difficult and to purge legitimate voters from the rolls. More than a million people have been taken off the registration lists in Texas since 2021. Most are people who moved or died, but over 6,000 were removed by Abbott because he alleged they were non-citizens. Sometimes election officials get aggressive in conducting voter list maintenance. And when they do that in a way that we think puts voters right to vote at risk and risks making mistakes, then I'm more likely to use the word voter purchase. With less than a month until the November election, rhetoric is ramping up. 
Our elections are bad. And with it, a number of conspiracy theories, like unsubstantiated claims of widespread non-citizen voting. And a lot of these illegal immigrants coming in, they're trying to get them to vote. Typically, the people who are telling you that non-citizens are voting in our elections don't have any evidence to cite. We all know, intuitively, that a lot of illegals are voting in federal elections. Conspiracy theories in elections are targeting immigrants, saying that there are non-citizens voting in our elections. They stole the FEMA money just like they stole it from a bank. And at the same time, you see the conspiracy theories about responding to Hurricane Helene. So they could give it to their illegal immigrants that they want to have vote for them this season. You know, Neither one of those things is even remotely true. The common theme is pandering to anti-immigrant sentiment and trying to appeal to people's xenophobia and racism. Donald Trump's on the ballot. This is a conspiracy theory that he's pushed before. Some of Trump's allies enacting rhetoric into law and reviewing voter rolls in Ohio, Florida, Virginia, Tennessee, and Alabama, where state officials claim they found more than 3,000 suspected non-citizens registered to vote. This is as close to bliss as you're going to get in Jefferson County. Rald Hasselhoff is one of those suspected non-citizens targeted by the Alabama Secretary of State. It's misguided, but it's also dangerous and it's intimidating. Rald moved to the United States in the 1970s and eventually made his home in Alabama, where he fell in love with the state. This is the part of Alabama that keeps me here. He dedicated his career to creating green spaces where people can come together. His biggest accomplishment, cleaning up this 600-acre nature preserve. Rawl became a father and grandfather here, and then two years ago he chose to become a naturalized citizen. I have three children, all three are American. I was trying to impart on them the importance of, of citizen participation and voting is the most fundamental uh, part of that. But this year, Alabama's Secretary of State, Wes Allen, announced an effort to clean up voter rolls. It is my constitutional duty to make sure only American citizens are voting in Alabama elections. And Rawls received a letter saying he was ineligible to vote because he had previously been issued a non-citizen identification number. Dear sir, you have been placed on a path for removal from the statewide voter list. I was just bewildered. I just missed out on a special uh, election here just for a local city manager. I was looking forward to that. Outraged by the violation of his rights, he sued state officials, including Secretary Allen, accusing them of targeting naturalized citizens. I feared that the people that would be targeted would be the you know, the Haitian, uh, Hispanic community. I didn't think I would be in that mix. I think we need to speak up when we see wrongs. The Alabama Secretary of State's office has moved to dismiss the case and told ABC News they do not comment on pending litigation. Hi, I'm Cecilia Castellano. I'm a candidate for state representative. I actually live here in Anascosa County. In Texas, Cecilia says what she went through has made her even more determined than ever to protect voters in her community. And so I thank each and one of you for being here for this great cause because we are going to make history together. We're going to make history together. We still have a lot of work to do moving forward. I know one thing. They messed with the wrong Mexican. They really did. And I'm proud of you. We're going to continue the fight, continue the advocacy, continue to make sure that, that us minorities are not going to be suppressed, to be intimidated, and to be told, you know what, You're, you don't have rights. Our thanks to Maria Villarreal for that.